that's me. And you're probably wondering how I ended up here. Hi-Fi Rush is a game where you bump to the beat, join the Rhythm Elite, and take down enemies with some dangerous feats. Before I actually get into talking about the game itself, I have to talk about the ad campaign leading up to it and the lack thereof. Seriously, to my knowledge, there was nothing about this game that has apparently been in development for six years. It just shadow dropped in an Xbox Direct and wowed people with its initial trailer and word of mouth. I gotta say, that is fantastic. I wish more games would do this. Instead of these extensive and exhausting year-long ad campaigns, which sometimes just wind up demoting a game instead because discussion going off of pre-recorded footage can easily be taken out of context or be unable to effectively capture the feel and fun of a game. Honestly though, this game belongs on a GameCube or something. In the best possible way, because it reminded me of a time when games that shipped were just complete. There was no battle pass, there's no seasonal DLC pass, there's no promise of free updates that are just things that should have been in the base game. It's just a complete gaming experience as soon as you buy it. Sure, there's a deluxe edition, but it's just some silly cosmetics and upgrade currency. Like hot dog if this isn't one of the best DLC shirts I've ever gotten. So, Hi-Fi Rush, what is it? That's not an IP. I recognize you may be saying as you scratch your chinny chin chin. It's a rhythm action game, basically taking Devil May Cry, Bayonetta, and the like and locking them into a beat prison for their attacks. You got light and heavy attacks, supports, a hookshot, aerials, and specials. The best part is, even if you aren't a rhythm master, you can still play the game. It just rewards you for keeping the beat by powering up your smacks and score bonuses. The game is rather forgiving too and has a multitude of difficulty and accessibility options, so if you've ever been on the fence about a rhythm game, I think this is a good one to start with. I was incredibly surprised too because the game is actually kind of long. Normally with a rhythm game they wind up being like 5 hours max, but my first playthrough on normal was around 15 and the game has plenty of post game too, like the bloody pal rhythm tower. But the main draw of this game has got to be the aesthetics. Obviously with a rhythm game you need bop and beats and it does have a plethora, but my god I love this cell shading style and every single character is not only visually pleasing, but incredibly expressive and animated. As soon as I finished the game, I downloaded all the cutscenes to scrub through frame by frame and study them because they just look that good. It's definitely got the kind of like 90s Saturday morning cartoon feel. The dialogue is pretty corny at times, but the tone of the game fits it so well that it loops back around to being charming. All of the VAs did phenomenal jobs and they introduced one of my new favorite Robo Boys, Cinnamon. Enemy designs are fantastic and catchy and they do a good job of differentiating themselves except for the birds. I hate the birds. Please remove the birds from the game. The combos don't get too crazy, but everything flows together incredibly well. Some are done by waiting a beat, and once you get more comfortable with the game, you can begin to combine things. Like, instead of doing nothing for that rest, you can summon an ally and then continue the combo. That way, every beat is a beat down. And when you do get in the zone and keep landing those perfect beat combos, it feels amazing. I love streaming this game too, because it was so gripping by itself, I didn't have to worry about my normal streamer anxiety of if I don't stop talking and entertaining, I will lose all of my viewers. But Chai and the gang had my back in keeping chat entertained. The game definitely has a lot of love put into it, whether it's nods to other characters from the studio, the amazing animated sequences, or just little extra details to make things stand out. Obviously, this footage to a different song doesn't really do it justice, but everything in the world moves to the beat, even just the background elements. One of my best examples of this feeling like a labor of love rather than a paycheck is one of the early levels a monitor turns on and the boss of the area taunts you. But the kicker is, it's completely and wonderfully animated. It's not just some canned talking animation. And the game doesn't even force you to watch. Heck, most players will probably move right past it and miss it. Compare that to, say, the recent Pokemon that couldn't even render a screen, so they used a JPEG until the scene swapped to the stage that had the professor loaded. I had mentioned this sort of thing back in my Mischief Maker's Side Assault, but this does feel like it came from the era of gaming where titles really had to wow the audience instead of just being attached to a name they know. Now before we get those super unique and funny comments claiming this is a side of sugar, I should get into the very minimal amount of salt here. Biggest gripe hands down, no lock on. This can get pretty annoying in certain battles where the enemy whips around a lot. There were a decent amount of fights where I would just summon to have them point me at an enemy by shooting them. You can adjust camera turn settings, but still, there isn't even a quick turn camera to my knowledge. There are also a lot of platforming sections in the game, which can be kind of fun, minus some of the precision jumps, because platforming just doesn't feel very good. Jumping is fine in combat, but it doesn't cover a lot of distance, and the midair jump covers even less. A lot of times I felt like I need 
needed to double jump to make it to a platform two feet in front of me. And I'm normally the guy that always double jumps for safety and control, but not for necessity. The game has replayability and even encourages you to backtrack, but I really wish it had more dialogue and tutorial skips, especially for the first couple of levels. I've only encountered one for like, the base tutorial. This one might be a little picky, but I wish there was more skill customization. You can unlock upgrades to certain effects and summons and even level them up, but you can only host five of them if you fully upgrade this feature, which is costly. And if you level up any chip, they cost another slot per level, so your builds can only have so much variety. This is especially annoying in post-game, because I mean, I kinda wanna just feel OP at that point, but at the same time, I guess all those S ranks I'm getting wouldn't feel as good if I was busted. This has got be one of the most fun games I've played in a while, and I'm already in the process of trying to get all the achievements. Definitely worth a purchase if you enjoy games like Devil May Cry or more action-y rhythm things. Been a while since I feel like I got my money's worth day one a game, but Hi-Fi Rush definitely scratched that itch. And it's only 30 compared to potential $70!